You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. <laughs> Coming up on this episode of the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. For me, it's such a tension. I live in such a tension where when I'm up there, I know that it's not me producing the movement of God, but I know that I'm up there to lead and steward a moment. You know, I'm, we're not fighting just to get closer, but what I'm saying is if there's conflict, we run head first into it. And on the other side of that is intimacy. And that completely reflects and translates into our worship and what we do. So I'm in heaven. There's not going to be someone with a microphone saying, OK, guys, let's just sing this to the Lord. You're going to be looking at him and it'll be a corporate worship service, you know. Kind of intimidated by technology like it's not my thing mm-hmm. and uh that kind of kept me from starting it but kind of diy'd it man and yeah here we go i'm 34 episodes in bro bro you have like a legit microphone and everything i do i do i love it it's awesome yeah i appreciate you coming on man yeah dude of course let's do this let's do I'm it i'm excited so i wanted to do I kind of told you yesterday a little bit about what, what this is all about, but the idea is Mm -hmm. we carry the kingdom and we have the privilege to release the kingdom everywhere we go and whatever occupation we do and whatever, wherever life takes us, we have the privilege to release the kingdom. And I wanted to do a kingdom through worship and you're the one that I thought of for that, bro. And this, the main reason, thank you. The main reason for that is because and you may hear this a lot, I don't know, but you really taught me how to worship. Like wow. when you guys first came a few years ago, um, there was something about you getting lost on stage and like, I'm a concert guy. Like I love, I used to be a concert promoter and I love like a, a good live show. And for you guys, it's obviously it's about worship. It's not about, you know, performance, but there was something about, you personally just getting lost on stage and it's almost like you were somewhere else. And I think that's probably what the case is, but wow. it was so, it was so refreshing cause I'd never really experienced worship like that before. You know, I was kind of, I, I grew up in the church and I was used to kind of performance based worship, you know, and I don't know how you take this or not, but you don't have like world-class voice. Yeah but you use it to perfection. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't know if you would agree with that (laughs) about the voice part. Like, I hope that wasn't offensive. I'm the best singer in the world, bro. (laughs) I hope that wasn't offensive, but I think you know what I mean though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's, I don't know. So so it isn't about like just ridiculous talent. It's about just knowing how to freaking worship. And I feel like that's you and, 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 and Stephanie Gretzinger, I think for me are the two that, I really learned how to worship just from watching you guys worship. And so I don't know if that's wow. something Thank you bro. You hear a lot. That means about, a, but yeah. That means a lot, bro, for real. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> and so we got we went to I've been to Upper Room once in Dallas and a couple Novembers ago. And we went to a we went to the the Sunday worship service and you were not playing but you were down amongst the people. And again, just lost in worship. And so it was really cool to see on the stage, off the stage. Like, I really believe this is a lifestyle for you. And wow. so that's where, that's why I thought of you. And that's why I wanted to have you on because it isn't just about, you know, releasing the kingdom on Sunday morning for you. <laughs> this is about releasing the kingdom through worship. And I wanted to, I'm talking a lot right now, but I wanted to kind no. of hear, I wanted to hear your heart about that. What do you think of when I tell you that, I just believe that you release the kingdom through worship. What's that? Yeah. What's that mean to you? I think the first thing that came to my mind when, um, when you said that is connection. And what I mean by that is like, um, I had this conversation today with, uh, Michael, you know, Michael Miller. Yeah. And, uh, and, 
and so obviously he um he's been an amazing like a like a father and a brother and uh we were just having this this really um kind of like heart to heart conversation and he said Joel you know you need to know that um you're a son in our house and uh and I was like well I mean I I understand what you mean but I I after that I went and processed it with the Lord and I realized like the Lord's teaching me to be a son right which is really beautiful but I feel like when I lead worship um in order for me to bring the kingdom, if that makes sense, is like, I, I know I'm not a slave to God and I'm not just a servant, I'm a son. And so every time that I show up, whether it be in on my piano alone or if it's in upper room on a Sunday night, it's not an expectation as much as like, I know he's going to show up because of the connection that we have. Just as much as like, I know that you're a father and in one of your kids... I don't know, like if you heard him in the other room saying, dad, you're just going to, you're going to go. Yeah. And I feel like it, it hasn't, it, it, for me, at least what, what, what kind of that sparks when you're asking me that question is my position of who I am with the Lord and how every time I show up to a place, the kingdom comes because I'm a son. Right. Yeah, right. And I'm, and I'm still learning that. Like, I mean, literally today, like today on, on, on Monday. And so, I, yeah, I hope that I, I don't know if that makes sense what no, I'm saying, good. but to me, like it, yeah. it, it doesn't have to do so much as to like the type of song that I'm choosing or um, how the people feel in the room. It's just that I show up and he's going to show up because I'm a son. That's so good. And he's going to show up because he's faithful, you know, and so it it has the kingdom of God has little to do with my ability. Wow. It's, yeah. it's just more about my it sounds cheesy, but my availability, you it's know, so like, good, man. Yeah. It. So, yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so good. I want to get into the, like some, some technical worship stuff at some point. Please. But, yeah. So like when you are, when it's your turn to be on stage and you know that you're going to be leading, how many people go to upper room right now? What's the number that we say? So we have three services. We have yeah. a Saturday night service. We have a Sunday night, ser Sunday morning service and a Sunday night. Uh, I'm going to say you're 1200 in a room tw 12. Yeah, cool. sure. That's, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you're fixing to lead 1200 people into the presence of God, into a, a setting of, of worship. What does you kind of maybe answered the question already, but what kind of responsibility do you feel that you have knowing that oh, you man. are selected to be the leader in that moment? to lead 1200 people into the presence of God. What's going through your mind? What's going through your heart? Um, oh, there's so much. So I give or take it's yeah. 1200 between 900 and 1200. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. I, I, for, okay. So for the past <laughs> year, um, there's been such an amazing, there's been amazing growth in our, in our community. Um, the Lord, it's like, uh, I don't know, like the Lord almost, I guess, put us on the radar. I, I don't know. For you know, sure. It's the Lord. Yeah, I get it. So a lot of people have been coming and we've had three services now and now we have like an overflow room. And as, 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 as a worship leader at Upper Room, you show up on a Sunday night and there's people from all over that come that, see YouTube and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I want to go to a room because what I see on YouTube, like yeah. th that's it, you know? Yep. And rightly so. Like, I mean, I remember when I would see Stephanie or uh, Stephanie Gretzinger or Jeremy Riddle, like, and I would see those YouTube videos. I was like, Oh man, I know when they lead worship, yeah. it's going to explode, you know? Yes. And so I had this almost expectation. And so what I have, what I have been fighting off is not so much what people expect of me, but the projection of what I think people expect of me. Okay. And it's again, it's, it's, yeah. it's what I mean by that is, yeah, explain um, that. I think that as a worship leader, sometimes, um, the Lord comes and moves in amazing ways and you get off stage and people are like, Oh my gosh, good job, bro. Oh, you killed it. You killed it. You're amazing. <laughs> right. And, 
And it's either it's either gonna get to your head and you're like, it is me, or you're gonna say, no, like, dude, uh, like I, I I suck. It's nothing about me. Blah, blah, it's blah. all God, bro. It's all God. Those are two, yeah, those yeah, are two yeah. like radical sides, right? For sure, yeah. And and for me, it's such a tension. I live in such a tension where when I'm up there, I know that it's not me producing the movement of God, but I know that I'm up there to lead and steward a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's such like a it's a constant surrender to the Lord, I guess you could say of like, Lord, there's people here that may have come to this church because they, they watched the YouTube video of me or one of my friends and they're expecting the same thing. But Lord, I can't lead the people the way that you can. I can only, I can only respond to you and obey where you're going. And I hope that somehow it translates to them practically. Yes. I'll lead the room, you know, but it, just as much as like I answered your first question, I'm realizing more and more that worship and worship leading primarily, it has to start with me locking eyes with him and yeah, me that's good. finding, finding his direction, me not being stuck on my set list, me, um, following the leading of the spirit more than what I think the night should look like, or even more so what I think even they, what the, what the audience may want, you know, yes. cause the yeah. audience may say, Joel, like I'm not even here for you. And usually, of course it's not even because of that, but Sometimes it can get to your head of like, oh my gosh, some people are expecting something, but yeah. sometimes it's just me projecting on them. Does that make yeah, sense? It does. Yeah, that's good. And so it's like surrendering that to and saying, Lord, like I, what do you want to do? And whatever that looks like, if it means that I start off with a song that we plan, let's do it. But if it means that I wait for 10 minutes and I just wait for your leading until you're ready to do something, I'm down for it, Lord. Yeah. Cause it, I can't lead the way Holy Spirit leads. I can't, Good. you man. know, that's good. And I feel like there's. I think there's a lot of fine lines. I think maybe this whole conversation, we're going to have a lot of fine lines that we're going to realize here, yeah. but there's yeah. a fine line between like, I mean, you can have the purest motives going up on stage to lead worship and be in the presence of God. And what you, yeah, what you just said was like, there's this, there's this false humility that comes into play, right? Of it's like, one or the, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm telling you, man, the more I, the more I'm like living in, like being able to do this, the more I realize it's such a tension. It's like a fine line of yeah. like, of like, I know I'm up there and I'm going to lock eyes on you, but I know that you trust me to lead these people. So Lord, like how, do, how does it work, Lord? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and, even, and it doesn't look the same every time. So even, even if you have a hint of it's about you at all, that that's leaving it open to this could fail. Oh dude. Right. A hundred percent. And so, and so what's the, I mean, and that's kind of a gross mindset, isn't it? Like, Leaving the stage thinking, oh, I just failed at leading people into the presence of God. That Dude, it's not about That's Joel. That's real. <laughs> it's not yeah. about Joel. That's good, man. And and it's such, it's such a good reminder because I don't like, I don't know if anyone will ever land on like, I know how to lead worship. Like it's an ever growing thing, right? Because you're dealing with God and you're also like leading people, but you're also leading yourself. And something, something that I have to, even as you were talking, I was reminded, like, I can, I can go into a room and there's 900 people. And I know that there's people from every, from different parts in life walking in that room. Some of them are doing amazing. They spent two hours every day with the Lord. Some of them were able to only read 10 minutes because their kids wanted to eat and one of them was sick. And some of them were, they're about to get a divorce. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's sure. people that are bound in, in addictions, you know what I mean? And so Lord, how do I lead these people? Like they're all in different parts of life. How, like I, if, if I do it in my own strength, I am going to run off the stage and it's going to be awkward. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But if, if I lock eyes on him and I, and I really follow him, man, I know it sounds so, e so simple, but it's, it's his leading. It's, it's, it's depending on him. And it's, and it's not, it's not so easy sometimes when, you can feel the pool of what you think a service should look like. Right. Makes sense. It does. Yeah. Is there, yeah. is there something to the idea of, this is actually a thought that's been going through my mind the last couple of weeks, but the idea of in worship, and I don't know if you know this, but I don't play an instrument. I don't sing. I don't do anything, but I do have like a heart for worship that's and, a awesome, heart, yeah. and, a, and a real heart for um, bringing people together to worship. And so, I don't know, I'm very passionate about worship. I believe, in my opinion, it's the most important thing in a 
quote unquote service or in a gathering wow. is is worship. Um, is there something to the idea of being an instrument for the Holy Spirit, like where He's actually yeah. playing Joel, He's actually playing Cody, He's actually playing Oscar, and to where it's like He He selects you and He chooses you? Is there something to that? I don't know. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it's a great yeah. question. Yeah. Um, I think that um, I feel like um, I've had the like incredible privilege of being able to be, I'm, I've been in upper room for almost six years. And so it's been a journey, right? Yeah. Um, and I was there. If, like I was there in 2013 and we were in a, like a small prayer room and we didn't even have click in our ears and we had yeah. no, we didn't have, yeah, we, it's just, it was crazy for a while. We didn't have click. It's just, we were just kind of doing with what we had. And, uh, and all of a sudden years later, you know, the YouTube moments come out and um, it's just been an amazing journey. Um, but, the constant thing, even from the beginning, even before, even before upper room, when I was in Bible college and even before Bible college, I realized like singing is amazing and being on that stage is amazing, but a life surrendered to the Lord off a stage completely translates when you're on a stage, even musically, even how you lead worship, because it it's, and again, I'm still learning how to do this, man. Like yeah. uh, the one thing is the one thing that I, that I don't want to communicate is, I got it. I know how to do this because it's, it's, I'm dealing with the living God and I'm a human being and I will always need him. I will always need to surrender. And so I feel like it, it's, I, yes, being an instrument to the Lord and being surrendered and all that stuff, but like, there's something about living my life yielded to him off a of stage that when I get on the stage and he begins to move, I'm just yielded already. It's a fruit of my life. You know what I mean? That's good. And yeah. so it, it's easy. In some seasons it's easier and some seasons it's not. When I don't understand things, it's easy. It's harder for me to yield to Holy Spirit because I want to understand things with my mind. But when things are easy peasy and like the Lord is moving and I got the right set list and it's like, oh, of course, like, yeah. let's do this, God. But when I'm feeling down or I had a terrible week and I'm like, Lord, I have nothing to bring. I have nothing to bring to you right now. Still coming in with thanksgiving and praise and knowing that he's good and knowing he'll show up and just being surrendered to him, man. There's something about living a life surrendered that he'll use you as an instrument. He'll like, Heidi Baker says like, Lord, pick me up like a paintbrush. Yeah. You know, yep. it's that, it's, it's that image of a life surrendered. And I think there is something to what you said to your question. Like, yeah, it, the, the Lord will move on Oscar, but it's so there's something about how he's living his life off a of stage that has a direct effect of how he's being used quote unquote on the stage. That's Makes good. sense to where, yeah, yeah. To where, to where it actually does make sense. Right. Like I would yeah, expect, yeah. I would expect nothing less from Joel knowing him off the stage that when he gets on stage, he's like sold out and he's like yeah. everything that God has created him to be. Well, I just don't think there should ever be a difference. That's right. Yeah. There, there should never, you should never be turned like you're don't, you don't turn on when you get on the stage. That's good. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yep. and it, I, I don't, I, I, I can sometimes struggle with like this, um, the feel of like, you see like you see someone off stage and then you see them on stage and they're a completely different person. Yep. And I mean, obviously like everyone's different, you know, and I'm not saying everyone has to look like me or like a certain person, but For like sure. there's something about uh, almost that the transition between off stage and on stage should be seamless. Like, that's, that's good. Oh, of course, of course you're going to do that. You know, yeah. of course you're going to lead that way, you know? Yeah. So that's good, man. I want to talk a little bit about teamwork or the idea yeah. of, of a worship team. You guys, and I, I think it has a lot to do with those YouTube moments. Like, yeah, how many, how much of that is spontaneous? How much of those moments that we get to see on YouTube is spontaneous <laughs> worship? Probably all of them. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Okay, so with yeah. that, I was actually hoping that was the case. So describe for, describe to us what makes that so beautiful, man. Just the idea of of spontaneous worship, whether it's you or whether it's you know J Rids or whatever. Just what yeah. what makes that such a beautiful thing? I love this question because it's beautiful, bro. Like yeah. my family puts that stuff on and you know, my, my 15 year old daughter's autistic 
and wow. she sings you're the one <laughs> you know uh, and so much and it's just she loves she loves all your wild and crazy and all that but uh, it's it's a beautiful thing for us to be able to gather around the google play yeah and just jam out to you guys and knowing that it's yeah. spontaneous so yeah talk to us about what makes that <sighs> such a beautiful moment oh man that really blesses my heart about your daughter yeah, um man. bro it's yeah it's they're all um spontaneous and um it's not it's not random but it is spontaneous and sure. yeah. what i mean by that is like there's so much that happens in the background is to, as to those moments most of those moments when 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 we when we hit those moments is because we like some of them sometimes it's like we're treading water yeah. and all of a sudden the lord comes and it's like oh goodness here yeah. it is lord yeah. oh my gosh you are good or oh my gosh <laughs> you're there's so many moments that i can That's just think good. about where where we're like lord what's happening and bam it just hits but like, for example, a lot of us uh, that you, well, actually all of us that, that are on stage yeah. do are part of prayer sets at Upper Room because we're a prayer house. And so we're doing week in and week out, two to four hours a week just in the prayer room. And so um, a lot of a lot of what we do there is spontaneous worship. As, a, as, as there's prayer, we kind of like kind of find the song and the prayer and then we just sing it. And so our culture is very much responding to the Lord now, right? The Rhema word of God, like the now word of God. Yes. What are you saying? Yes. Um, and it's, it's an overflow, you know, it's an overflow of our hearts. Um, practically speaking, um, for example, me and Oscar, Oscar is the, the music director and um, he's also talk back. And so we, we, we know how to communicate to where when I'm feeling something, he will start playing something that'll back up what I'm singing. And sometimes I don't even need to tell him something. But again, that takes history. We've been doing it for six years now, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so there's a lot of history there. We also do sets together. And then there's a lot of risk involved. Yes. Sometimes you step out. <laughs> Are we out going here? Are we going here? Yeah, yeah bro, 100%. Because <laughs> so, here's the thing. YouTube is awesome. It's also highlights. Okay. Yes, there you go. That's good. There, there's, there's moments where you'll step out and it just flops and... <laughs> What did I just sing? You know, and That's where so did good. the band go? But then there's these holy moments that you sing and it's it's like the entire room takes over. It's not even me leading. It's the entire room. We're all yeah. looking at the same person, you know? And so they're wild moments. It's it's they're holy moments, man. And they're and they're only authored by Holy Spirit. I can't produce that. Yeah. That's so I've good. tried and it's terrible. <laughs> you can't. That's you can't, good. bro. You can't. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, I've, I've had the privilege to experience you guys a little bit when we brought you out for a couple consecutive years to a 48 hours of worship that we put on. And I got to see you guys really be a family, you know, like mm -hmm. you guys are brothers and sisters and it was just so beautiful to watch. I consider you guys young guys, you know, obviously, but yeah, just these young kids just loving each other, like brothers and sisters. And like you said, when they go on stage together, it makes sense that they would perform like a family, you know, and yeah. like be able to read each other and know each other. And there's a uh, lot of fights involved there, bro. I'm telling like, like, it, <laughs> like brothers and sisters. Yes. Like brothers. It, it, it has like, um, there's, um, one of our friends from upper room, his name is Michael Malden. And he's, yep. he's always said conflict breeds intimacy. If you want yes. it, conflict will breed, will breed intimacy. And so, there's even practically speaking, there's sets where we'll do the set and then we get off stage and then we have difficult conversations of like, man, why did Joel, you were kind of over singing or Oscar, you, I didn't feel like you backed me up or Julian or, you know, like the band. Yeah. And so we, we, we've learned to kind of like grind the stuff out to where when we get on the stage, we've communicated things. And so we've, we've gotten to know each other as well as like you said, history. So we are like, we're like brothers and sisters. We argue, we fight, but it's always into like getting closer. You know, yeah. I'm, we're not fighting just to get closer. But what I'm saying is if there's conflict, we run head first into it. And on the other side of that is intimacy. And that completely reflects and translates into our worship and what we do. So, well, and one thing that you guys are, too, you're you're well rounded. You know, you're not you're not just worship kids. You're not just musicians. Um, I know when we've had you out to Dodge City, there's been times when we've broke up into groups and you guys in pairs have prophesied over over leaders oh, yeah. and over families and um those that to me because i've been to a lot of churches bro where the musicians show up play their set 
and they go hang out in the back on their phone, you know? Mm. And mm. it's, and I, in that instance, I'm just talking about church, but there's something to the idea of this is who you guys are, you know, that you're not just mm. musicians and you're not just up there to perform. And I wanted to talk a little bit about practice too, because yeah, that's something that drives me nuts is hearing people talk about worship practice. Cause to me, you practice for what you practice for a performance performance. Right? Yeah. 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 And so I feel like what you said, you guys, your guys is quote unquote practice time is literally in a prayer set. Yeah. We're in right? the prayer room a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so speak to that a little bit about, um, yeah. Talk to, talk to those people that are maybe new to this whole worship team, worship thing where they're, they think that like it's practice, 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 and then performance. Yeah. So, um, dang, I wish Oscar was here too, because Oscar has such a beautiful way of explaining this. Um, we obviously don't perform, you know, when we're yeah. up there. Um, but there is a really high value that we have for excellence. Yes. And there's a difference between excellence and perfection. It's good. Uh, we're not striving to be perfect. But we do want to be excellent at our craft, whether it be singing or playing an instrument. And so what that means is you have to get to know your instrument. And the only way to get to know your instrument is by practicing your instrument. Good. So that because, for example, on, on these perfect it's I love this question because those spontaneous moments that you see on YouTube, a lot of it is so it's it's 100 percent risk taking, which means that you don't have time to think, OK, what do I play right now? It's like you're just it's so as much as singing. Like when I'm singing, I'm not thinking what I'm singing. I'm just letting myself go there. Musically, you have to know your instrument well enough to be able to even follow that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so there, there, there is requirement for practice, but it's not to be perfect. It's not to perform. It's to be able to respond to the Lord rightly when he comes in the room with your instrument. Just as much as singing. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, so that's good. There's, there's, we have a high value of like practically like if we have a set list, learn your parts. Learn your parts so that when we're in, when we're in sound check, we don't really have to go through that to where when we hit the song at night, we're just kind of coasting, not coasting, but we're just kind of going with the flow. You know what I mean? We're not thinking, yeah. okay, I'm going to play the one here or I'm going to play the C chord here. Okay, then I'm going to go to the D minor. It's more... We've already practiced that. We're not even thinking about that. We kind of, yeah. not that, not that that's the boring stuff, but like, no, let's just good. worship. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's just worship. And if, so, yeah, if we happen to skip a part, don't freak out. We might come back to it. So know it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. knowing your parts. It's that's almost good. like, it's, it's, it's as much as like, um, how is it? People say, what's that? What's that quote? Um, yeah, I can't remember if it's a quote or not, but we have, we, we will pick like what four songs and we go through everything, but usually we'll only end up doing one. Yeah. But we always have a landing pad just in case yeah. we have another song where we can bounce back off from. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. And so in so, order for that, you need to learn the parts, you need to learn the key signature and the BPM. And so, yeah. Just in case Holy Spirit comes out and you guys are playing a 15-minute Holy Spirit, we love you song, <laughs> right? Exactly. Where do you go from there? I don't know, bro. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, man. Can you um, explain to us the Amos Project? Yeah, of course. Amos Project is part of Upper Room Global. Upper Room Global is basically, I guess you could say, a vehicle to equip the praying churches. And so we are a prayer house at Upper Room. Upper Room is a prayer house. We're also a church, but our predominant thing is we want to build houses of prayer for the Lord to come and inhabit and all over the world. And so part of my job, I work for the Amos Project. It's like, let's just say Upper Room is a cloud. Upper Room Global is a cloud, and then Amos is like a little thing, like a little thing that grows out of the cloud, right? There you go, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so um, what we do is me, there's an, another guy named Brett, um, and then who's the person who's over at, over that is Trace Howard, and uh, so is – so oh, hold on, I'm going blank. It's Trace Miller and – yeah, Trace and Miller. Yeah. And what we do is um, – Corey Russell. Corey, there we go. There Corey go. Russell's yep. in it. Corey Russell's in it. Yep. And uh, what we do is we basically train, like if they were to send me to like Denver, I'm able to train Upper Room Denver with the culture of Upper Room in the prayer room. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so awesome. we, serve, we, serve, we serve in the prayer room. We're equipping the prayer room. We're um, anywhere they need us, we're there. And so right now, for example, we read, we read books together trying to find like material. How do you, how, how can we equip the prayer room more? How do we raise up other Levites in the house? And so it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing, man. That's good. You guys yeah. have a, a beautiful culture there at, at the Dallas Thank campus, you. for instance. Um, Thank you, man. 
talk to me about this. You, you kind of hit on it a little bit about yeah this new level that you guys are on now, like popularity wise, you're probably getting asked to come to bigger conferences and bigger events. You guys got invited to come to the Sind, right? In Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talk about what that happened a was, bit? yeah. What happened was that there was a, an event called the flood, which was leading to the Sind Cause we actually didn't lead anything at the Sind. We just attended, yep. but the flood was a week prior to it. And it was, um, it was so, dude, it was so amazing. It was a bunch of YWAM Kona, uh, people from all over the world, well, yeah. Kona, but also YWAMers from all over the world. And, and just different leaders and they all got together in this building. And so from, from Monday all the way leading to Saturday was a, was a event every night there was worship and there was someone that would speak, but man, like the, the hunger that was in that room from all the, all the people there, it was just amazing, bro. Cause it was, it was a lot of missionaries and just people that are really called and burning for that. And I actually was convicted because it, it's so easy to get just comfortable being in the church. Yes. Um, but seeing them, they're the church, but they're the church in Kona. They're the church in Indonesia. They're the church. It's just so amazing. And, and they also carry this like prayer house thing. And so it's, it was just so refreshing for us, bro. Yeah. And then you go to the send and it was like the like explosion of yes. the whole week. You know what I yes. mean? And so it was so powerful, bro. Louis Engel, all those people, Michael Colliano, they're just, yeah. it's amazing what they carry and what they said yes to. It was so refreshing yeah. for us, bro. That's for me. Awesome. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. um, how do you stay grounded? now at this point because uh -huh. there, there is a there is a level of like increase in um i hate using the word popularity but i think you know what i mean like you guys are getting yeah. getting yourselves out there the lord's getting you guys out there how are you staying grounded as far as um just personally i guess because you're the face to some people you're the face of upper room you know, you know that right to some people my face to some people you are yeah yeah i Man, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be really honest. Um, I think that sometimes that still freaks me out yeah. because I, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't know. I struggle with like people being Christian celebrities. Yes. Like no one, I don't, I don't like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing, you know, I don't consider myself that at all, right. but I think like, it kind of goes back to even the prior question that we were, that we were talking. Like, I, I think it, it's, I, it's such an honor to be able to do what I get to do, bro. It's such an honor that the Lord has put me in that place. But like the moment that I think that it has anything to do with Joel and yeah. what, how Joel sounds, that's when it starts going really twisted. And it's, it's a rem it's a, it, I have to, it's a reminder to myself that like what, what people are attracted to is not me. It's, it's the Lord, man. It's the Lord moving. I, I, I have people around me also that I'm walking with, that I'm open with about my life. I think that's a major thing. People that I could say, Hey, like I'm really struggling with this today. I'm really struck. I, I don't really understand what's happening or, Hey, I'm overwhelmed by, by, by what's happening around us or, Hey, I've, uh, I'm feeling this, or if it starts getting to my head, it's just it, having people around you. They're saying, Joel, it's the Lord or Joel. That that wasn't right that you said that or Joel, you need to calm down. Does that make sense? So being, be, yeah. having people around me that are going to just be real with me is so good for me, bro. As well as, as all honestly, be, like n I don't have to keep reminding me, reminding myself that it's the Lord, but every time I meet with him, it's like, <sighs> like wow. Lord, I'm grateful that we're, that, that, that I get to do this, but the moment that this ends, I will be okay because it, it's, it has everything to do with you, you know? And, um, I don't know if that's even answering your question. I no, think that good. it's, it's that's such good. a, it's such a process for me, bro, because yeah. it, it, this is all, this is all still new to me. I'm still learning how to handle all this. I'm still learning how to like deal with all, all the, all the, the all that the Lord is doing in, in our community. Um, but I, if I don't, I have to be with him. I have to spend time with him. I have to say no to things. I have to like, that's good. Be with him or else it, it just gets crazy and overwhelming. And so if I'm not meeting with him, if he's not feeding me himself, I, I will go crazy. Yeah. I will good. go and it, and it will get weird, but I, I have to have him bro. And yeah. so that's how I stay grounded. I stay grounded with, by being with him, open with him being, he get. Okay, here's the thing, bro. Like 
um, in, in Proverbs, it basically says, and I'm going to butcher this proverb, but it says like you, you test the heart of man by the praises that he gets, there you go. right? Like silver and gold is refined by fire and the heart of man is exposed or by, by the praises that he gets. And some t- and I will tell you, exposure will reveal things in your heart that you didn't even realize were there, whether it's a, like, whether it's like, Lord, I am all about you or Lord, I still feel this or Lord, why are they looking at me? All these it, your yeah. things will come up, bro. And I am actually really grateful that my heart has been exposed in this way because then I, I bring it to the Lord. But then I also bring it to people in my life that I'm walking with. Yeah. And it's it's unto sanctification, Good. you know. And so, yeah, I hope that answers. No, that's great. The question. That's great. <laughs> You're asking such good questions, bro. Hey, I'm, thanks. You're, 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 I, just like communic- I like conversation, man. You know? I do too. Yeah. You're like, you're, and, and you're kind of like, you're getting me at a point where I am literally processing in my life everything you're asking me. That's so good. Even, even, even today, even today, yeah. I met with one, one, someone that I'm walking with, and just this stuff started coming up. Like, I'm feeling this and this, and the only way to stay grounded is to be with the Lord and to be with people that love you and that are going to call you out on your That's crap. Good. And don't, I, I mean, it's and don't you think it's, don't you think it's always good to like ask yourself why am why am I doing this? You know, Dude, like a hunt, like why am remembering I remembering <laughs> exactly like why why am I why am I showing up to this again? Or yeah, what what is the actual reason I'm up here? You know, and it goes back to, it goes back to simple devotion to Jesus. You know, and sometimes right now it's gonna it may look like me being on a stage in ten years. It may look like me being a dad taking my kids to school, not being able to grab a microphone for like. A month, you know, or a month, you know what I mean? And yeah. so it's, 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 it's staying simply devoted to Jesus in every season of my life that keeps me grounded. Cause if, if I live my life to be on the stage, bro, what happens when I turn 50 and I'm not cool? I don't have long hair anymore. You know I what know, I mean? Right. You, you know what I mean? Like for real, like yeah. what, what happens? It, does my whole identity just leave out the door or do I just still keep seeking him? Good. You know, and, and, that's what keeps me grounded. Him, him and him and people. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So why, yeah. why is worship corporately within the church, the body of Christ? Why is it so important? Ooh, why is worship corporately so important? Is it important? It, yes, it is important. Okay. Um, Biblically, um, I know the you know, Bible. Dis- I know the Bible yeah. answer, Joel. Yeah, don't despise <laughs> fellowship with the brothers, right? Yeah. The idea. I think that for, for me, the idea of of him being enthroned on our praises. <laughs> I know the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know, it's because I'm because you said I know the Bible, Joel. I'm, it's because I'm processing your question. No, that's bro. good. No, I get it. And, awesome. I, and, I, I love and I'm it. also a verbal. Pro, I'm also a verbal processor, so that's it awesome. takes a little bit. I love it. So the okay, the idea of him being enthroned on our praises. I'll just lead the yeah, question. He, I'll he, lead the question. He, Talk yeah. to me about the importance of that. Um. So I can, so, okay, the Lord will come and meet me when I'm in my alone time. And it's really, really beautiful. And often I've also realized when we come together in the room and we all unite under the same thing about the Lord, something happens that doesn't happen when I'm alone. And it's, it's electric, bro. It's like, it's like heaven. I mean, oh crap. Sorry. (laughs) Can you hear me? I got you, man. You're good. Perfect. It's like, it's like, like in heaven. Yeah. I don't like, I'm sure we'll have one-on-one with the Lord, you know, for sure. But there's this thing of like, can you imagine we're around the throne and you hear the elders drop their crowns and everyone's saying, holy, and we're all together. And you kind of look to your right and you're seeing your best friend, dude, can you believe we're doing this right now? Jesus. And so I, I, I have felt that feeling in a corporate setting and it's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like a whole room encountering the Lord. And what's even my, my most, even more favorite is when I am not leading the room anymore. Yes. That's when those I, I, that's those voice only moments that you guys have on a lot of your uh, records of like the music drops and it's literally you are holy, holy, holy. Yeah. It's, oh, bro, I love that's, it. I love that's, it. That's heaven. That, I got that's chills, heaven. bro. Like, yeah. I know, me too. Because bro, in heaven, I'm, in heaven, there's not going to be someone with a microphone saying, okay guys, let's just sing this to the Lord. That's You're right. going to be looking at him and Woo. it'll be a corporate worship service, you know? And so... I hope that answers the question because for yes, me, bro, it it's, 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 it's heaven worship. Corporate yeah. worship is like heaven. Yeah. And also I can talk about the secret place 
And there, that's a whole different thing. Well, talk about his presence worship. then. Talk about his presence then, because I believe that worship is like it, it ushers in the presence of God. And yeah. most most churches start off with worship. For for what reason do you think, Joel? I think, um, well, I, I don't want to. Yeah. I want to honor. Yes. Okay. Yes. I would say that um, what I've experienced in the past growing up has been like, it could feel like worship has been like the, what's, what's the word? Like to warm up the crowd. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the message. You're and kind of, You're kind of the uh, opener, right? Yeah, the opener. <laughs> and, I, and I can struggle with, and I've struggled with that in the past because I'm like, I mean, we're, we're worshiping the living God right now. Yes. Like, I don't, I don't need, I don't need to warm you up. Like, yeah, he's in front of you, you know, that's good. Um, what I've, what I've come to like, what I've come to like experience, like for example, prayer set, perfect, perfect example, prayer set. We have both a worship leader and a team and a prayer leader and we will start worshiping. We'll start thanking him and praising him. And all of a sudden, Holy spirit will reveal something about himself. Yep. And we'll hone in on that. Like, let's just say he reveals that Jesus is faithful. Jesus yeah. is faithful, faithful and true. We'll yeah. hone into that. And bro, some of the most powerful encounters that I've had is whenever the prayer leader begins to pray and agree with me and agree with the Lord that he's faithful and true. And when, and so that's why, like, when you're asking me this question about churches, the most powerful services I've encountered is whenever worship happens. And then it's almost like worship never ends. It, there's just a message that comes with a worship. Does that make yeah, sense? It does. That's and it, it's not so much as like worship. Okay, guys, thank you for coming to black church. Yes. Now we're going to preach. There's, I, I believe it's such a seamless thing that I've been able to encounter in the prayer room. And so I think it's not so much that worship is a warmer upper <laughs> for the message. It's just part of the journey of encountering the Lord, just as much as a message of a beautiful message, like a timely message is so powerful, bro. Yes. And so it, I don't think one is less than the other. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's a great, it, sh- it should be, I, sh- I think it should be seamless. That, that is the correct answer. Good job. Yeah. Thank you, bro. <laughs> I hope I get a hundred. <laughs> I want to, I'm not going to keep you too much longer, but I, I do want to ask about what makes, because I feel like there's going to be people listening that are a part of a worship team or a part of a, you know, uh, worship in their church. What yeah. makes, in your opinion, what makes the perfect worship team? The first thing that came to me is yeah. before you're a team, be a family. Before you're a team, get to know each other, get to know each other in like in highs and victories and get to know each other in lows and when you fail, um, I'm telling you the guys that I walk with and with in our worship team, they know when I'm doing amazing and when I have money in my bank account and when I'm doing really bad and I have negative 50 cents in yeah. my bank account. Yeah. And when I'm, when I'm struggling, when I'm going through things, when I fail, when I fall down, they're the people that I'm like, help me get back up and they help me get back up. And then I'm telling you, when you get up on a stage and you start leading worship and practicing, there's this history that you share that it it's covenant, covenant. Yes. Yes. have covenant with people, get to know them, walk with them, walk like as a worship leader, walk with your team, get, get to actually know your team. What's their favorite color. What's their yeah. favorite food. You know what I mean? Like what's their favorite movie? How, 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 what was their upbringing? Things like that, that like you start building history with each other and it, it completely translates when you're on stage where some, there are times where I'm on stage and I don't even have to look at Oscar and Oscar will start playing what I was thinking. Yes. It's, it's, it's yeah. wild, bro. Yeah. But that's because we're walking together. Does that we're make connected sense? Connected in spirit. Yeah, that's good. We're connected. Yeah. And so, so I would good. say before you're a team, be a family, whatever that means for you, be a, be a, be, and get real, get real, that's have good. hard conversations. If something's bothering you, talk about it in love and in honor, but talk about it, bring your heart in, you know? Yeah. And yeah, no one wants any more teams. We want, we're over teams. That's so like, good. Like sports if you want teams. Like, so you know good, what I mean? That's like awesome. it, we want family. I love so. it. Talk to yeah. us about the latest record. I want to encourage Ooh, people. Ooh, latest go, record. I want to encourage people to go out and get it. Talk to me about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's called To the One. And it is um moments that have been captured. It's it's actually full songs that have been captured during services. Yeah. Um and there's a couple of songs there. One of my favorite ones is called after you it's by Alyssa Smith. Oh, yes. it's yes. so good. It's just about 
loving the Lord and, and, and going after him. And it's just a bunch of songs that have come from really deep places, you know? Yeah. Um, and hearing it when I first heard it, I was kind of amazed just because it, it's crazy to like hear my best friends write beautiful things like that. You know, it's the sound of our family. It's the sound of there's, there's, there's pain. There's, there's victory. There's failure. There's so much in those songs yeah. that have, that have birthed this, yeah. what you hear, you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. What's yeah, man. Your, <laughs> I love it. What's what is your what is your favorite worship song? You personally. Ever? Yes. Okay, I love your presence. Wow. I That's can awesome. tell you that. I it and it's hard for me to say that because I love a lot of songs, but yeah. Usually when I whether I'm alone or with, with people, whatever I'm singing, I love your presence does something to my heart. You know, they're like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. Even whatever for people listening, but like it's like there's songs that you're like, I feel like I know that that person wrote that song, but I feel like that song you wrote it for me. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you kind of wrote that for me because when I sing that song, everything inside me comes alive. It, yeah. And so that's probably one of my favorite songs. I love your presence. It's an old, you know, old vineyard for song. Sure. Bethel did it. I love Bethel's version. And so it's just a song that just makes my heart explode every time, man. I love that song. Well, so. my favorite currently. Holy Spirit, we love you, bro. Whatever, I'm bro. I'm dead freaking serious. Dude. <laughs> Thank you, man. That, that song, I had Little John on here. Uh, it was last year sometime when I had him on the podcast, but that record had just come out, and he said, you've got to you got to hear this new song, dude. I haven't stopped spinning it yet. And I went wow. and listened to it, and I still haven't stopped. Like, I love, that Thank is you, a man. that is a presence tone setter for me, bro. Like, it. Thank it you, bro. Sets the mood. And uh you bring that means the kingdom. A lot, man. You bring the kingdom in my living room, bro. Thank you, bro. It's so it, awesome. I, it means so much to me that like what you told me about your daughter and stuff. Yes. It for real, like yes. like it if there's any reason why we're doing what we're doing is for those moments, bro, where God will meet people in the living rooms. Yeah. You don't need a stage, you know, and That's right. uh, bringing thank families you for together. Telling me that. Dude. I, I worship with my family in my living room to your guys' stuff. So it's, and I know you're not taking credit for any of that. It's all God, right, Joel? It's all God. It's all the Lord, bro. It's all the Lord, bro. Lord. If it was all him, it'd be a whole lot better, wouldn't it? <laughs> Honestly, someone said that. Are you sure? Because if it was just, someone told me that, and I was like, oh, dang, you're right. Like, the That's Lord's so a little good. bit better than that, bro. A lot That's better. so good. Yeah. Man, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on, man. And uh, we, we are, we are watching you. you from afar. And thank you bro kind of feel like family man you've been here a couple times and we uh yeah bro i, I love, love you guys, what you guys man. have bro every time yes. we've been there it's been so refreshing and it feels like it feels like family you guys yeah. have this thing of like you guys are for real hungry for the real thing you guys want the real god and you guys want real family so good bro yeah love you guys and uh love you bro i hope you uh take a shower and get cleaned yes. up because it looks you. you look like you stink <laughs> I kind of do. I kind of do a little bit. <laughs> All right, bro. I appreciate you, man. I love you, bro. Bless I love you, you, love man. you too, man. Bye. Talk to you I'll later. I'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to Joel Figueroa. Love Upper Room. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends. Share it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey, please go visit kingdombringer.com. There you will find the Kingdom Bringer blog that comes out every week. Also, easy access to the podcast. So go to kingdombringer.com. Share that link with your friends also. That'd be fantastic. Uh, like us on Facebook at KB Podcast. There you can donate to what we're doing here. If you guys appreciate these episodes, if you appreciate what we're doing, go to Facebook. Donate to the Kingdom Bringer podcast. And we would be blessed. We'd be honored. We appreciate you guys even prayerfully considering that. So thank you so much. Hey, do me a favor too. Don't forget to go check out the Two Brothers podcast and Supernatural Living with Beth Packard. Both of those podcasts along with the Kingdom Bringer podcast are a part of the KB Podcast Network. Go check them out. Share those with your friends as well. They're amazing. Until next time, be blessed.